Book of Genesis, Chapter 2 The seventh day God rests. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God finished his work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his hard from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation, the creation of man and woman. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In the, in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. When no bush of the field was yet in the land, and no small plant of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the land, and there was no man to work the ground, and a mist was going up from the land and was watering the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living creature. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden. In the east and there he put a man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made to spring up every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river, a river flowed out of Eden to water the garden, and there it divided and became four rivers. The name of the first is the, is the Pishon, it is the one that flowed around the whole land of Havilah. I'm going to butcher like a bunch of these names right Sorry about that. Where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. Bedellium and onyx stone are there. The name of the second river is Gihon. It is the one that flowed around the whole land of Cush. And the name of the third river is the Tigris, which flows east of Assyria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may surely eat out of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in that day that you eat of it you shall surely die. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Now out of the ground the Lord God had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all livestock and to the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall upon the man. And while he slept, he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And, that, and the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. So, in Second Genesis, it lays the groundwork for love between a man and a woman, right? Well, between like, you know, a, a partnership between a man and a woman. And it describes how a rib from Adam was taken and turned into this woman. So, in some way or another, love between a man and a woman is about unity of the whole. It's about... It's about a man finding his other rib and a woman finding her... the origin of her rib. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's sort of how I'm, like, inferring it. And... It says it here in, uh... 224 therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife and they shall become one flesh so when a man leaves his parents 
and is joined with his wife. They become one flesh. And in that way, they are united. They are whole again. And they are no longer separate entities, but one and the same. Another thing that I've seen like pop up on like social media and all whenever I go into like Christian pages is they bring up how it's specifically the rib that Eve is made from. And a lot of people tend to interpret that as she wasn't made from the head of Adam to rule over him and she wasn't made from the feet of Adam to be trampled on by him. She was made from the rib of Adam to be equal, to be on equal footing, to be to be the same, essentially. One gender does not hold power over the other, and that is how it's meant to be. At least in God's good creation, that is how it's meant to be. No gender holds power over the, over the other. We are all on equal footing. We are all equals. We are all here, children of God, loved by God, united to Him in Christ. God does not God does not favor one or the other. He favors both. And he favor he he loves all. Another thing I want to point out is the numbers here. So man was made on the 6th day and God rested on the 7th. And in, in the Bible, right, the number seven comes up a lot. Like, the number seven is one of the most common numbers that is mentioned in the Bible. And it is typically believed that the reason why that is is because seven is considered a holy number. Whereas six is the number of man. I feel like there's a meaning hidden in the rivers that flow out of Eden. Because at first it was one and it divided to become four. And I I feel like there has to be some sort of meaning to that in particular. Like the division of one river into four. Like the division of one thing into many. And it is brought up uh, later on when we get to the New Testament when it's told how Jesus split the five loaves and two fish to feed 5,000 people. So it is... It's in some way in God's capacity to be able to split one thing into many and for all of those parts to be just as whole as they were when they were one. While also... Actually, I think that might be the meaning. Because if it's talking about the unification of man and woman, and how when they are joined together, they become one whole again, then I assume that the river sort of mirrors that in a way those are the only things that are really sticking out in my mind i don't really have anything else to say uh but leave your thoughts down in the comments on what you thought of this chapter and you know let's get a discussion going let's you know dive deeper into god's word together and let's see what we can what we can get out of it like let's see what we can let's see what 
God is trying to tell us with this. That's all I have to say today. Keep running when no one else is.